Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Homeschool Mondays, every Monday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be teaching a class uh, dedicated to helping homeschoolers out because this time of day uh, in the United States uh, is when homeschoolers are uh, doing their schoolwork and hopefully this will be a great class for them to learn more about the violin. And I have with us today a couple of students. I'm very excited about that. Last week we didn't have as many, and I'm glad uh, that Eric and Adeline are with us today. Adeline, uh, this is your first time ever on the class. Uh, you are from Germany, so it's actually a lot later uh, your time. Um, tell everybody what time it is there, and uh, also tell everybody just about yourself and how long you've been playing for. Yeah, I'm from Germany, and it's uh, 6 p.m. now in Germany. And um, I've been playing the violin for um, a little bit over a year. And I wanted to play it because I think the instrument is looking very well. And um, I heard that's a very difficult instrument to play. And I said some uh, time in the future I want to say uh, I can play this difficult instrument. And I th think the sound of it is very nice too. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Well, that's what I'm here for, to help you out and uh, everybody else that's watching out there. Um, it's very exciting just how much it's growing in such a short amount of time. Um, Eric's uh, actually with us today as well, and he mentioned that um, he's starting to get to know some other students that are participating in the platform, uh, like Joyce. I actually talked to Joyce yesterday, Eric, and uh, she mentioned that you guys have been chatting back and forth. Yes. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us, Eric. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Very good. So uh, another thing, too, um, any student that participates in the classes will receive a $25 gift card for um, to spend on my Superior Violin site. So Adeline, you'll be uh, eligible now for that. And anybody else uh, that's interested in uh, um, joining in on the live chats will get an opportunity to get one as well. So today I'm also expecting maybe another student to pop on, Marco. Uh, you guys have seen Marco before in other classes. He's one of my private students. And in today's class, I decided that I wanted to talk a little bit about um, violin practice suggestions and routine. So it kind of applies to everybody. Everybody has to practice the violin. And I figured after today, hopefully you guys will get some tips on things to do that might help you uh, and just uh, get a nice routine together so you're um, able to do the best out of your practice time. Uh, so. Maybe to start, I just want to just see um, where you guys are at, uh, Adeline and Eric, as far as your practicing. Um, tell us about how long you practice, say, per day, and um, maybe what time of day you practice. Just tell us more about your your practice routine. Uh, Adeline, why don't you go first? Um, yes. Um, normally, I, play, I practice first after the school when I come home. Then I want to do what uh, something different, and then I play the violin for uh, maybe 30 minutes. And then um, mostly um, in the evening or afternoon, I'm playing it for one hour when I have time. And yes, I'm, uh, I never uh, played scales or something like that, and you said that I have to do that, and I uh, bought some... Um, papers, some books, to, um, to learn scales too. Yes. Very, very good. Yeah, and uh, we talked about that at our lesson. We just had a lesson last week for everybody out there to know. And uh, yeah, we talked a lot about the scales and different things that I'll mention today as well that are good for practicing. Uh, Eric, tell us about your uh, practice routine. And don't feel bad if it's you know less than that or more than that. <laughs> well, uh, now I have little bit of time on my end so uh, I have the chance to to practice more some dates uh, my my time of practice could vary from 30 minutes to more than three hours it really depends but uh, when I started I didn't want to make it um, something stressful so I didn't care much about the technique and uh, with uh, time, I want to make it a little more correct, and I'm uh, trying. I'm 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 doing more scales, and uh, I have goals and drills. Sometimes I can work on vibrato harmonics. That depends, and I have my my plans. I have books that I, uh, I go at my own speed. 
but uh, as it's going good and I feel good in that, I can put a little more pressure that, uh, that, uh, than at first. Absolutely, good. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite a bit. Um, three hours is is probably out of my studio. Everybody that is in my studio, that would be the top. Uh, that's quite a bit. Um, I would say the average practice time for students that are adults are between um, uh, 30 minutes to an hour per day, uh, but typically that's only like three times a week about. So I would say the average adult practice is about 130 to 150 minutes a week, I would say, is the average. Um, I would say teens seem to practice a little bit more, um, maybe 150 to 180 minutes average per week. Uh, and as you get younger, the less amount of time I require for students to practice. For example, uh, a four or five year old, I only have them practice, say, 30 minutes a week. And it kind of goes up from there. So like a 10 year old, I might have practice 100 minutes a week. Um, but typically, if you're any over 150, you're doing great. Uh, that's basically 30 minutes a day for five days a week. That's awesome. If you can do that every day um, or that, that often, that's really, really good uh, pace. So. Uh, another thing I want to mention, and uh, this I think is really good, is that practicing isn't necessarily all about the amount of time. It has a lot to do with the quality practice. Doing quality practice is extremely important, and basically what that means is that when you're practicing, you're doing the right things. You're practicing the right techniques. You're working on the things that you should be working on. Uh, so just playing your favorite song the whole time, unfortunately, is not going to keep progressing to the next level. Although that is fun, and we've all been victim of it because we've all done it before. I've done it before. Um, the whole practice time, you know, just because I just want to play a song that I really love. But you know, try to get into a routine of at least the first half of your practice session to work on things that you need to work on, like technique and different things, scales, because um, that's going to ultimately make you sound a lot better in your songs. So. Um, I suggest you know at least a half hour of you know really good practicing, which uh, I'm going to write this down. So these are kind of the elements that I would suggest that you guys put into your practice routine. If you guys have a piece of paper or pen there, you guys can write these down. Uh, the first one is well. <clears throat> So drill is, I believe, the number one, the first element of practicing. And uh, drills can include like the rocking bow drill. Uh, Eric and Alan, I'm noticing a little bit of an echo. Um, not sure if, if that's either one of your... Um, Computers, but typically, if the speaker is really loud, it causes an echo. So if you guys can maybe mute your mics or um, turn down the speakers, that might help. Uh -huh. Not sure if it's either one of you guys. That's better. No, okay. That was me. <laughs> that was you. That's okay. That's happened many times before. Sorry. It could be me. I I I put them uh, lower too, so it could be my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Okay, so the drills, uh, it could be rocking bow drill, it could be index drill, it could be wall drill. Wait, what? Which one that turned? Pinky drill. So these are some of the drills that go in with practicing. Rocking bow drill, index drill, wall drill, pinky drill. And for those of you guys that don't know what each of these are, I'll just quick give you a, um, an intro to each of them. I have very in-depth tutorials on my website at violentutorpro.com as well as on YouTube of each of these. So if you just type any of these into YouTube, you'll find, find an explanation on each of them. But basically the rocking bow drill is where we um, test out tension of the bow by going up and down from our elbow all the way up and, and trying not to make a sound on the violin. Um, and you can do that in different parts of the bow. That's a really good way to warm up. Uh, the index drill is where we press down on the stick, make sure that the hair doesn't rock, just to practice using the front finger to guide the bow and not our arm to guide. So we wouldn't want the arm to press down, we want just the front finger to press down. That's another one. 
Another one that I've been doing a lot lately with students that's been helping a ton is what I call the wall practice. There's two ways to do this. There's to either put your elbow up against the wall or even better put your wrist up against the wall at this point to where you literally can only move the wrist to, to play notes. So I can do it without the wall because I've been doing this quite a while. But basically watch how there's nothing that's going to move from here down. Just my wrist is going to basically play. I can only go so far, but it's going to really force me to use my small muscles. So as you can see, I didn't have anything moving here. So that's what you could actually put up against the wall. That's a really good practice. Um, one that's a little bit easier is putting your elbow up against like a chair or some sort of object to where now you can move your forearm but not your upper arm. That's also a good good practice drill. So all those kind of deal with a wall drill. The next one is the pinky drill, which is basically um, I showed uh, yesterday on the class. Eric, remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where we press down on the stick and make the bow come up. Uh, this also could be called the windshield wiper drill. And this really helps to build flexibility in the pinky. So what I would suggest is that you guys, I'm going to um, outline this into a 30-minute practice session. I would suggest you guys do that for five minutes. I'm going to write that down here. So as you can see, drills, here are the drills. They take about five minutes. So that's kind of our first part of our practice session. I'm going to put a, a line there. Okay, part two in our practice session is going to be scales, always scales. So let's write that down. Okay, so uh, basically scales is um, playing a, a series of notes just up the, up the instrument um, progressively. And it, it really uh, is good for working on the left hand, working on intonation. So everything we just talked about ha had a lot to do with the right hand, the grip and the index and the pinky. Uh, the scales are going to work more of our left hand. It's kind of like if you're working out, you're, you work like your legs for a little while and you work your arms. The right hand is working your arms, now we're working the legs, we're working the other part of our, of our body. Um, now what's good about that is that we don't want to focus a ton on everything at once. We want to kind of segment things. So that's where scales, you can really focus on intonation. Um, things that we've been talking about in the classes are like getting your knuckles up high. So I always have these marks on my hands. I should probably do more. But making sure that our um, hand is at this part on the fingerboard and not this, this part. Um, and then working on the different scales. And basically depending on what level you're at, there's going to be a different series of scales that you're going to want to do. If you're just starting, you're going to want to do, you're going to want to learn D major, G major, and C major. Those are going to be your basic three, three scales, one octave. Those are kind of like the first level of scales. The second level of scales, I would say, are A major, F major, B flat major and E flat major. And these are all one octave. Actually, G is uh, sorry. G major and B flat major. Those are going to be two octave scales. Everything else is one octave, which means that it's at one series of notes. Two octave is two series of notes. So this would this would be the first level of scales. This would be the second level of scales, and then the third level of scales. I would say would be C, D, F, and E flat. And these are all going to be in two octaves. Two octave scales, C major, D major, F major, E flat major. If you're confused about this at all, please email me, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. I have all the scales on my website and on YouTube, uh, basically the tutorials of them all, but that's kind of the breakdown of depending on what level you're at. So I would say the first 
the first line here, I would say students that have been playing under six months, I would say those three. Students that have been playing under a year and a half, I would say line two. Students that have been playing under three years, I would say line three. Uh, and then it would go down from there. That could keep going with different combinations, but I would say those three. And if you're wondering about more, just email me. So the scales, basically, we want to use the whole bow. I'm going to write down whole bow. It's really important not to rush the scales. So this is a G major two octave scale. Notice how much bow I'm using. So you can focus on getting your knuckles up using the whole bow. Practice changing your elbow position, G major, I'm sorry, G string, D string, A string, E string. Make sure you're pivoting nicely and then extending and bending coming this way. So with the scales, you can work on using a lot of bow. You can work on bending your wrist when you're coming up bow. And uh, actually a lot of things, but those are two good things to work on. So I would suggest doing the scales for another five minutes. I'm going to write that down here. Five minutes. All right, so that's section two. All right, section three. I'm going to write down etudes. So basically, etudes are um, different pieces that aren't necessarily songs that you like perform but they're combinations of notes that are tricky, that help you to work on like crossover techniques and different things. Um, a good book that I would recommend to you guys would be the Wolf Art book. I'm going to write that down. It's kind of spelled a little bit weird. Wolf Art. Um, Wolf Art is kind of the introductory etude book that I recommend to students that have been playing about a year. And the Wolf Art series is basically a great series that covers a lot of different rhythms, a lot of different crossover techniques. Um, if you go to Google and you type in Wolf Art Etudes Violin, there's a free resource. You can get it totally for free um, because it's in the public domain. So that is a really good um, method. Um, Wolf Art, you probably would be in for the first one to two to three years, I would say, of playing violin. After that, I recommend the Mazas series, and then the Kreitzer, and I'm not going to be able to spell Kreitzer. <laughs> but we have Wolf Art and Mazas. Mazas would, I, I have students working in that that have been playing about three, four, five years. And that's going to have a lot of more, you know, advanced um, combinations, crossovers, shifting, stuff like that. So Wolf Art Mazas for etudes. And I would recommend doing etudes for about about 10 minutes. Now, if you don't have an etude book, you, you could do, like, let's say you don't want to learn classical music. You, you want to just do fiddle, or you just want to do a certain style, or you're not really a serious, like, to really advance, you know, with different things. That time, I would suggest working on different pieces you like, but focus more on technique during that time. That needs to be a time where you're focusing on, okay, I'm really trying to get this crossover technique better. I'm really trying to play this in tune better. Um, try not to make it an absolute musical time. Try to make it a technical time, I would say. So that, um, that basically covers so far 20 minutes of time. Now in the last 10 minutes is where I really want you guys to not think at all about technique. And I'm going to call it the perform time. The perform time. And this is a time where I want you guys to not think as much about technique, and I just want you to play. I just want you to use everything you've learned and just not even think about it. Because the more you do the drills, the more you do the etudes, the more you do everything and you think about it, the more it's going to naturally come into your actual um, songs. Even though you might not think it is, it is. So if you 
focus on the technical side of things for the first two thirds of your practice time. The last third eventually is going to start to apply some of those things. But it's really important not to be too technical. I just want you guys to find the song you love and just play it and just do your best and try to sing it. Because it's really important when you play the violin or any musical instrument to not be like a real mechanical player. You want to be a, a fluid player. It's kind of like if you sing a song, you don't want to like, you know, think about exactly, you know, if you're a little pitch ahead, uh, uh, sharp or flat. You just want to sing. You want to just let, let yourself go, let yourself hit those dynamics, let yourself just, you know, be fluid with your, with your voice. It's kind of the same thing with violin. You know, don't focus so much about technical, about your knuckles up, about everything. Just play. So that's the last part, and that can really be open to just about anything um, as far as music. If you guys are interested in classical, uh, I, could, I could recommend some classical books to you if you email me. Um, if you're interested in um, fiddle, I can recommend some fiddle books to you. Uh, really anything that you want to learn, and everybody has typically things in mind they want to learn. So um, that's the time for that, and that would be the last 10 minutes. Now, if you're going to do a 60-minute practice session, basically what you would do is you would just double everything. So instead of doing drills for 5 minutes, do it for 10. If you're going to do your scales, do it for 10. Do your etudes for 20, and do your solo for, for 20. And this is exactly how I teach on a daily basis. When students come to me, they have an hour lesson, we do this exact routine. If students come to me for a half hour lesson, we do this exact routine every week, and it works. I've done it for years now, I've been teaching full time for five years, and it works. It's a good system to um, develop students technically, but also musically. Those are two different things. Very good. So yeah, I hope this is a good uh, resource for you guys, and um, you know it's certainly uh, probably different than maybe what you guys are used to, or you know the audience watching out there. It's uh, takes some discipline and some working through different things to get into the routine. But I promise you, this is a great practice regimen that applies to maybe not just violin, but also other instruments, just other uh, learning music. I think. So, Adeline, what do you think about all this? Do you think this is uh, um, some things maybe that you're going to change now from, from this lesson? Um, you know, maybe this gives you a better idea of, of what to work on? Yes, of course, um, because I hadn't a really good structured practice time, and now I know what I have to do and uh, in what way, and that's very, very good. You now I know how I can practice um, well. Yes. Good, Thank good, you. good. That is the, uh, the goal for everybody to have a better idea of practicing, because uh, practice makes perfect, absolutely. All right, Eric, uh, what do you think? Uh, was this a good lesson for you? Absolutely. I think the same that Adeline. Uh, it's, uh, it gives a, a really, really good uh, ideal structure. A uh, uh, question I had, uh, some, with other instruments, with, with guitar, for example, I... Uh, I choose something. I I practiced solo studies. It should. Uh, I like that better than uh, performing in that scale. So I know it's the it's not complete as what you teach. But uh, if someone would like to put more emphasis, uh, sorry, uh, emphasis uh, on the studies, would it be something good? Uh, maybe play studies for the technique part and for the performing part. I don't know if it's a, it's a, if it if it would be a way to um, to 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 gain time in a, in a particular way to uh, use more for time to use technique in in between uh, the performing and the technique uh, part. Yeah, in a more uh in a more general sense, Eric, basically, um, as you're going, you know, you start your practice routine here and you go down. Mm -hmm. And I, I gave you specifics of what I think could be done. Good but in general, I think um, what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to accomplish where 
we're starting off very, very technical, and we're thinking about every detail you know that we can technically with the right hand with the left hand. And as we go down, we're thinking less and less about it. So you know, I have students that are in both boats. I have some students that like they're almost too technical. Like you know, they won't even like move the bow until they think it's going perfect. You know what I mean? Like they won't play songs. They just want to like get everything perfect. And then I have the other side of that where students are like, you know, they just play and they don't care about tech technical parts. They just want to sound, you know, make it make the song the song sound good. And I don't care about how my grip is or how my wrist is bending or anything like that. So there's two sides of it, and this kind of helps to kind of have a balance there because it really does take a balance. Um, I have some a lot of students in my studio who are very technically sound who aren't as musical. I have some students in my studio who are very musical, but they're not as technically sound. So my goal as a teacher is to develop a student with both because that's what makes you uh, eventually, you know, really have great success in the violin and eventually, in, you know, sound good. Um, you know, when you're playing a recital or you're playing a piece, uh, you know, that, um, you know, you really want to make sound good, uh, the technical side just has to be there, but when you're performing it, you have to be thinking musically. You know, you have to be playing and just interpreting the transitions and all these things, just like you're singing, you know, like, you know, everybody can sing and hit a, hit a note in the right spot, but how do you transition into the note? How, how are your dynamics? How, how is your interpretation of the music? And those are things that really aren't like technically explained. It's more just feeling the music, which is that last part. Mm -hmm. um, so, but basically in general, uh, everybody's in a different boat, everybody's at a different level, but if, any, if there's anything I want you to take out of this lesson, it's that as you Practice, think very highly te technique at the beginning, and think less and less, and then think more musically at the end. And you can do whatever you can to do that, but I mean, these are just some suggestions. Um, certainly, to sound great on the violin, you don't have to do wolf art. You don't have to do scales necessarily. Um, you don't have to do drills, but these are just things that can help and have, have worked for me with my students. I believe it's the best. It's a, it's always a, a, it's a, it was only a question because it's something I I did in the past with another instrument when I didn't want to put any pressure. I chose uh, studies. I thought it was something like in between, but uh, I know that I recognize easily that this is the best structure that we can find. Very good. So uh, yes, I think this is a good way to end the lesson. I think uh, we talked a lot about. Um, you know some things for you guys for you guys to work on this week, and um, just please feel free to email me if you have any questions about the routines. And uh, I hope this is also a really good lesson for the homeschool crowd out there. Uh, I'm still trying to get a feel for them as far as um, you know what they're looking for as far as content. I know some people are just starting, and some are maybe even playing a while. Um, but I really think it's a great platform for homeschoolers, and uh, you know these are free lessons, and I'm um, here to help. So hopefully the word gets out. Um, I'm starting to try to email different people and let them know more about it, but um, word of mouth is, is very much appreciated with this. And uh, I think this is a good lesson for, for all homeschoolers just to, you know, have a good practice routine, you know, when they're at home, uh, you know, and have a certain amount of time to spend, you know, and making the best out of that time, the effective time. Because uh, I see quite too often students that are say they're practicing, but they're not really doing anything even close to this. They're just picking it up and kind of, you know, have their violin way down here, and they're just kind of, you know, playing random songs and twinkle, twinkle, and you know what I mean. It, it is it's so important to do the right things. It goes a long way if you do that every week, every every practice time. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, tomorrow, eight o'clock, I'll be covering. Uh, some more rhythm stuff in our uh, technique class. I know Adeline, you, you won't be able to make it because you're. It's probably really late there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's kind of the um, the negative side, I think, of you know doing these worldwide classes because, um, yeah, like my for example, my technical Thursdays class is at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's probably like what it's five in the morning there your time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the thing, but what's cool about this platform is that um, everything is posted to YouTube. So uh, I think, Adeline, you've been maybe watching some stuff later on after it's aired, which is very, very good as well. 
Um, and anybody that misses the classes can do that. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to be covering some concepts about rosin. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about rosin, and uh, I just wanted to cover some things, answer some questions. Um, Lisa Lathrop, she's uh, been asking me a lot of questions about it, and she's going to join us on that class. Um, Thursday is our Technical Thursdays class at 10 Eastern Time, and uh, Fiddle Friday at 5 this week. So hope to get you guys in on some of the classes, and uh, just let me know if you have any questions. You can visit my website, violintutorpro.com. Uh, live chat me anytime, and then for those of you as well that are not on my Facebook page yet, it's facebook.com slash violin tutor pro. Thank you guys so much for joining us, Eric and uh, Adeline, really appreciate your time, and I hope you guys uh, learned from this, and hope you guys are able to apply it to your practice time. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day, guys.